LA area. Now this was a, a dangerous pursuit at a time. This car was going dangerously fast and for a while the Newton Division um, LAPD that was behind him had to slow down at times and, and get it into a tracking mode. But again, this is a pursuit and right now this is surface streets in South Los Angeles. This is a pursuit of a suspect reportedly wanted for carjacking with a firearm. And the last note that we've received is that uh, he might have a gun. They're not quite sure and he might be a parolee at large. Now, this carjacking took place in June, so uh, this guy has obviously been on the run for a while. Now, uh, this is, uh, as we said, he was going very, very fast now, but this is a complete slowdown. Now, it looks like this police might be appear to be making a pit maneuver or trying to gain some um, speed on him. Uh, we've seen this Ford Ram truck drive through surface streets at one time. He even stopped at an intersection and we saw him talking to people on the street. Very strange behavior. Even saw him high five or fist bump another man through his truck window. He might know people in this area. We're not sure why he's sticking to this particular area. And in the, just the last few minutes, uh, we've seen him uh, just continuing to slow down at, at times, appearing apprehensive, perhaps debating what his next move should be. But um, time and time again, he has decided to carry on and keep these officers in pursuit. Now, this is where it gets dangerous at these intersections because at times he just uh, runs the stop sign and continues on. He is driving relatively slow, thankfully, because earlier on, here we go, this looks like he might be attempting a pit maneuver soon on this guy. Um, difficult, though, because this Ford, I believe it's a Ford Ram truck. This is the westbound 92nd in South Los Angeles. But uh, it seems like that would be a challenge because... Um, even though that uh, CHP are the, see that, I forget what kind of car that is that the officers use, but that Ford Ram truck that the suspect is driving is certainly a heavy, um, I don't know, half-ton truck of some sort. I will have to ask Dave Coons on that one, but um, it seems like it'd be a tricky maneuver, but they haven't been able to do any spike strips as of yet. That would certainly slow him down. Uh, this is following just another pursuit that we covered about a half an hour ago that fortunately that one did come to a close in Chatsworth or near the Northridge Mall. Um, and here we go. Now he's on northbound Central Avenue. And and maybe he knows this is his last rough. He is a parolee at large. Um, perhaps that is why he's continuing on this pursuit. We don't know um, the details of what he's wanted for, but we do hear that it is a carjacking that took place with a firearm uh, back in June. So I think these officers really want to get this guy and stop him before he causes some more issues. There we go. Um, successful pit maneuver, but he's continuing on. Like we said, that's got to be a challenge with a truck that size. But obviously, um, they don't want him to get away. They don't want him to cause more issues. And this is kind of always scary when they start to speed up in these surface streets, especially around this time of day when kids are getting out of school. It's always kind of cringeworthy to watch them plow through these streets. This is uh, eastbound 84th place, and there you see a car almost just... Uh, now he's turned onto Hoover, and this is a very narrow street, as you can see. Pedestrians have to be walking around there. It's a very dangerous situation. It's difficult to stop them, I think, on these shorter... I mean, these uh, smaller, narrower streets. Uh, here he comes coming to a stop, trying to figure out where he's going next. And sometimes you, you, you have to wonder their state of mind. Oh, there's a spike strip. And, oh, he was able to go around it. Um, that was a good try. But um, hopefully uh, down the road there will be more opportunities to do that spike strip because that would certainly bring that truck to a stop. Um, officer right there on the side of the road. And he's just trying to get around there using the median, um, just kind of in and out of traffic, not even in the lanes. And uh, kind of a wide truck to get through those narrow spaces, but he's managed so far. Uh, as, as of now, we don't think he has hit any other cars. Um, but again, this is not the best situation to be on these surface streets. Um, let's see if I can find any more information. Okay. Bear with me. Um, okay, we have a Bruce Thomas. He's a retired LA County Sheriff um, officer. And um, Sheriff, are you there? Yeah, I am. Go ahead, Ellen. Hi, Bruce. Thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's tough sometimes because we have very little information out here. We're just watching this pursuit. What can you tell us? And what are you, what's your opinion on this pursuit? Um, I just picked it up. It, uh, my understanding is um, it's a carjacking suspect, but he's possibly uh, what we call a pal or a parolee at large. 
And also there may be an assault with a deadly weapon on a uh, police officer also in this. Mm. So when it, you have a situation like this, obviously he's dangerous. He's, um, you know, he's desperate to get away. Does that change the tactics on this type of pursuit? Well, there's a couple of things that are in, in, involved in the pursuit. One, if he is a parolee at large, um, he doesn't want to go back to prison or the, the county jail. The other issue is, too, if you have an assault, a deadly weapon on a police officer, that elevates and ramps up the mindset of the police officers on this because they want to take him into custody. And obviously, this guy doesn't want to go into custody. Yeah, and earlier we were we were commenting that he was going really fast, and for a while they had to sort of sit back and make it a tracking mode as opposed to a pursuit. How do you decide when you're on surface streets how closely to follow a guy and, and perhaps make him more desperate? Well, there are certain factors involved in a pursuit. Speed, traffic conditions, direction of travel, how many people were in the vehicle, what is the vehicle and the people wanted for. Those are all factors. And obviously with traffic conditions, if he's going 70 or 80 miles an hour on a residential street, we're going to back off, meaning the police are going to back off, go into that tracking mode because it's just so unsafe. Right. And, and he does appear to be doing circles. Like he just backtracked to, to where he was before. We saw him earlier, you know, kind of high-fiving somebody on the street. Uh, these pursuit su suspects often go to something familiar because they perhaps can find a place to hide out or turn into an alleyway of some sort. That's correct. They usually, when we've seen recently, a lot of them, where they go into an area they're familiar with, meaning they're going to an area where there are friendlies. They can jump into an apartment building, like you said, and maybe someone will give them refuge. They also know the areas before they can bail out. Or they may just be trying to contact loved ones and talk to them on the phone or something before they do initially have to surrender at the terminus of the pursuit. Yeah, we just saw an interesting thing. He kind of stopped alongside a car that was going the opposite direction, seemed to like talk for a half second and go on. So maybe he does know people in the neighborhood um, that he's trying to get in touch with. So in this, this, we saw him try to do a pit maneuver on a surface street. Is that common? Um, pit maneuvers are governed by the street. I mean, it, it, obviously a less crowded street where a pit maneuver is easy because it's wider because you do have to hit the suspect vehicle a certain way to the rear of the vehicle to spin it out of control and the vehicle doing the pit maneuver has to speed up to really spin the suspect vehicle. Mm -hmm. So on a crowded street like this with a lot of cars, maybe some people, not really apropos. Well, here's a bit of good news. We understand that he did hit a spike strip. So when they're waiting for their tires to simply deflate, do they just sort of just lay low and wait for that to happen? Because he can't go on forever with the, with the rims. That's correct. The spike strip has little, like, they're basically metal straws that what they do is they embed themselves in the tire and they let air out very slowly. Mm. One, so that the vehicle is not, well, it will come to a rest without any kind of danger aspect. In this case, the police are just sit back, wait for the tires to deflate, it goes on the rims, hopefully disables the vehicle. Then they can conduct their felony traffic stop and take the suspect into custody. Oh, good. It, it must be challenging to, for this type of huge truck to try to do pit maneuvers and, and try to get him to stop. That's the other thing, too. You're correct on that. Um, depending on the type of vehicle and the size of the vehicle, pit maneuvers may not be apropos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, hopefully the spike strip, it looks like to me uh, that that back tire is acting a little wonky. So perhaps um, he's slowing down because he's feeling the effects of that already. Does yeah, it does look like that uh, passenger rear tire, as you said, is starting to deflate. The other thing, too, if he goes in the same general area, the police can set up more spike strips. And they're going to flood that area with additional officers. Mm. So when this thing does end and he goes to ground if the suspect flees or foot bails, they're in the area to take him or her into custody. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah, so it, what he thought was a smart move staying in his area is actually a detriment for his safety or his uh, his getaway. So thankfully, that uh, that is the case. And he, there's no way he can get on a freeway at this point with with us with a tire that's been spiked. Um, you know, I would say no, but unfortunately, we have seen suspects with vehicles that have been uh, spike stripped do some crazy things. Isn't that crazy? Well, now you're a retired officer now. Uh, retired sheriff sergeant, yes, ma'am. Okay, and are are you surprised the number of pursuits, or, or, is, or has it always been this much, this many? Pursuits? You know, it, you, you know, you bring that up, and that's a real interesting question because it seems like we've had more pursuits this summer. Uh, and varying pursuits, pickup trucks, semi-trucks, U-Haul trucks, 
in addition to cars, too. We mm-hmm. just seem to have a lot. And I don't know if it's the weather, but, but uh, L.A. is definitely the pursuit capital of the United States. And, and do you ever get like a little, you know, your adrenaline going when you watch these officers have to do this? Because it's probably fresh in your mind. Um, no more adrenaline. When I retired, <laughs> all the adrenaline and all the stress went totally out of my life. Oh, good for you. I have Colleen Sullivan <laughs> joining me now. And you know what? I'm very happy for you because that, that's wonderful that you can enjoy your retirement after so many. You know, thank you for your service. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, hi, uh, Bruce. Colleen again. Um, hey, Colleen. How are you? Uh, very well. Uh, you know, you guys were talking about these rims, but don't these look like those run flat sort of? They're so wide and fat. So if they're on a run flat rim uh, tire, how do those respond when it, they hit a spike strip? Because he's being able to drive, and that, that passenger uh, back tire did look a little, as Ellen said, wonky. <laughs> um, but it did look a little bit off, and now it seems like he's kind of driving pretty fine. Oh, another spike strip's being out, oh, and good. he hit this one. Left right rear there. tire and the front left are going, um, they're pretty much deflated. Yeah, great, great question. Well, you know, the run flat tires, you know, they do run for about 50 miles before they're no longer able to uh, to use. But in this case, you know, some of these rims and these trucks, when they trick them out, they have what do they call a thicker or like a racing tire, which is really low profile. So in this case, the spike strip is effective, but it does take a little bit longer. Okay, so just a matter of uh, a time before they can get there and buy. And again, this That's man correct, is wanted ma'am. for uh, perhaps a, a carjacking that took place in in June and also assault with a deadly weapon and a, assault on a police officer. So this guy, obviously, if he's a parolee at large, as you mentioned, a POW, um, he does not want to go back to prison. So. That's correct. And in this case, the, they're formulating additional plans and having additional office there for the felony um you know, stop, which they're going to conduct on this guy because he is an assaultive, high-risk felon. So they're going to make sure that they uh, are treated appropriately. Yeah, and Bruce, you know, as we've been covering a lot of pursuits lately and uh, the Sheriff's Department and the LAPD, they're trying to be as cautious as possible to, you know, not have collateral damage, I guess, with, you know, other vehicles, pedestrians, anyone who could you know, be hurt. So at some point, it d- does seem like they're taking these pursuits a little bit more cautiously, aren't they? Yeah, there was a study that actually came out earlier this year that unfortunately, one of the police agencies, uh, as you say, collateral damage, seemed that there were a lot of third party collisions related to the pursuit. So that's something that the watch commander who's at the station, who's listening to the radio traffic, and also the field sergeant involved in the pursuit, they're monitoring closely because the last thing we want to do is have anybody injured due to the suspect's actions and ultimately the police actions. That makes a lot of sense. And now that his tires have been spiked, is it easier to do a pit maneuver now if the circumstances are right? Um, It would be, however, on a pickup truck like this, the pit maneuver is going to be very, very hard. CHP vehicles are equipping themselves with like a metal cage around the front of their vehicle Ooh, right. so that they can spin. Mm. Where LAPD vehicles, they haven't gone to that yet. But it's only a matter of time. Yeah, well, it looks like he's really, he's really slowing cautious down. in this intersection, which is good. Yeah, maybe he's considering surrendering. That would be wise well, on his part. All these black and white, at some point you have to say, I, I'm really not going to be able to get away. Yeah, you know, you would think that, but unfortunately, when you have a parolee at large, someone who's been in the jail system for, you know, felony crimes, not just misdemeanors, their their mindset is, I'm going to jail, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to prolong this as long as I can. Yeah, we saw the officer right behind him kind of waving him forward. Is there uh, any way that they could be in communication with him and and telling him to, let's get away from more, you know, less, less populated place or get, I don't know. It, you know, it, it's possible he could be on the phone trying to negotiate some sort of surrender. We've seen that in pursuits, too. Maybe talking to loved ones who are trying to get a hold of the police and negotiate something. Look, it, you're going to go to jail. Let's do this. Why don't you just pull over and let's just do this. Mm-hmm. Um, you also see the number of uh, police vehicles in it. You have, you know, three primary police vehicles, and you have a supervisor involved. But in this case, you probably have additional units because he is a known felony suspect. Yeah. It's just, you know, 
lead you to go, does this person know this area? Because so many people go outside and we always try to tell people, don't go outside, don't take video of, because you never know what a pursuit is, what happens during a pursuit, anything could happen. So um, aren't you sort of surprised? I certainly am when I see people go outside and take pictures and video or not run inside. You know, you would think, but once again, we've had a couple of pursuits recently where we had people on Ventura Boulevard and Encino, one of the pursuits that you guys covered, um, where they were actually taking matters into their own hands, boxing the suspect in, trying to get him out of the car. There was another one in Sherman Oaks where the people were throwing stuff at the suspect. So people do some crazy things. Yeah. When we saw this particular suspect uh, about... I don't know, 10 minutes ago, stop at an intersection and a guy came up to his car and he was kind of doing the fist pump with him. And Yeah, look at that yeah. guy right there. Yeah, kind of. it's like maybe he, well, okay, he's turning around toward the officers Ooh. now. Ah, you turn. Uh -huh. He's not going very fast. Well, you see 20 miles. Well, you know, we always say they're not going very fast and then they pick up speed. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you just never know what what is going through the mind because it just totally goes against common sense that the person thinks they're going to be able to be let go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so and, and we've, I'm sorry, and we've oh. seen pursuits where they pulled into big, you know, parking structures in downtown L.A. They don't get away. So I don't know why they think this is going to be any different. Exactly. Maybe each person thinks, well, okay, I'm going to be the one that does it. But uh, <laughs> with, with flat tires and on surface streets with a bunch of black and whites behind him, it doesn't look promising for him. But the, he does pull over and talk to people, so, you know, this is this probably, or it looks like he, this is an area he's very, very familiar with and may know these people. Yeah, maybe he's saying his last goodbyes because he knows he's going back to jail, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a mandatory jail sentence for uh, pursuits. Hmm. Oh, that, that's, Interesting. I, that's good to know. Because if, I feel like if people realized if you keep having, if you keep having officers pursue you, there's an extra added so many years onto your sentence. It may be wise to just... I know, exactly. Right. There, there is a mandatory sentence, and then obviously all these other things that he's doing, they're keeping very good track of them. The, uh, the police or the sheriff's uh, headquarters units, they have video units that, that are taping this, you know, tape the news, tape things, and detectives will ultimately get that tape or, and, uh, and look at it and make additional charges. Yeah, I'm just glad that he's not going too fast because these surface streets are what makes it so dangerous for the public if they just happen to be walking across the street. And, you know, so he, at least he's staying at a slow speed. Maybe that's because of his um, tires or, or he, have, he was going slower before. So who knows? Maybe he's just doing a little last parade. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you don't know if he's armed as well. So that's the whole mm -hmm. thing because he could possibly yeah. be armed. So that is it's just scary. And you can't really see inside the... The mm -hmm. cab to see what, he, but he looked when we do see an ever so slightly yeah. looks very calm. No, it looks like he was about to come to a yeah. stop. And he's done this several times. He, he he kind of hesitates. He stops and then he, you know, decides against it. But well, that's like in the, when the terminus of the pursuit happens when he finally pulls over or the spike strips have taken their effect. The uh, LAPD in this case will do a felony traffic stop and they will have their guns out because you are dealing with a dangerous felon. Uh, a carjacking suspect, assault with a deadly weapon uh, suspect on the police, in addition to the stolen vehicle. So there's some serious felony charges there, which he's definitely going to be wanted for. It also looks like the pickup truck is rocking, so I think the tires are deflating very quickly now. Yeah, it does. And, oh, it, you know, right. and it, it's, it makes you think, you know, those officers, you, and unlike yourself, you know, put your lives on the line um, to get this guy, and it, it's, it's too bad. You know, well, that's...
June. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've they've kind of been on to this uh, parolee. I know we uh, are joined by Bruce Thomas as well, with uh, a former sergeant with the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Bruce, are you still with us? Yes, I am. So you've been watching this as well. We uh, had to do some of uh, some other business as well. So uh, tell us, all these tires look like they're they're done. Yeah, that's correct. They definitely look like uh, they are running flat. And he is circling the same area now. Uh, looks like this is the third time around this supermercado type supermarket and then the residential area on Central that he's on. So at this point, I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah, we're, we're kind of wondering, like, what is he waiting for? Maybe some friends that he, you know, in, in the street or the neighborhood. But you're, I think this is about the last place he stopped uh, just a few minutes ago, too. And he, he does that. He stops he does. and the officers open their car doors and then he continues on and he goes around the block. Yeah, apparently, you know, the, he's wanted for some crimes that occurred earlier this year. And so they know who he is and they know about him and they've been able to track him down. And now they want to take him into custody. And they, and they, they probably tried to do a traffic stop of some sort. And that's when the pursuit ensued. Interesting. We're just hearing that a, a photographer from a different station got his press pass pulled by PD because he was literally standing in the street as the pursuit went by to get his shot. And you appreciate, you know, he wants to get the shot for, for news, but it's also you have to keep your safety in mind. And keep the officers yeah, in mind. Exactly. You know, I saw that earlier and yeah. I was kind of surprised, but we have seen stringers do that also. And obviously... The news agencies know you, you shouldn't put yourself in danger like that. Exactly. I think he went into a parking lot, or, or, or is oh, that an alleyway? Side alleys, too. Oh, boy. You know, that's L.A. You have all these side mm -hmm. alleys that are just... And he's always oh, getting, really getting he's trying to go fast. And this is uh -oh. where I get nervous this with is... pedestrians well, in there's the area. Another, yeah, there's another car right there. Okay, it looks like he is going to be coming... Oh, I thought he was going to go into a dead end, but he's in a little, little tiny alleyway. That's what's scary, too, with families and mm -hmm. kids and... Yeah. Well, at this time of day, kids are all going to be getting out of school soon. Mm. This is scary. Yeah. Now he's running the stop signs. For a while, he was sort of kind of doing a running stop, but um, he seems to get a little more desperate. As I, I think he knows it's they're closing in on him because four tires that are are flat. It, it'd be really tough. Yeah, and that's something that they're managing in the pursuit too. Like you said, schools are getting out. Streets are getting a little crowded. You have uh, kids walking home from school with their parents or in groups of them, uh, you know, students walking. So especially in residential streets, you want to take that into account for safety. Certainly. And there you see a bunch of people with their cameras. Yeah, and um, you see the waving. police officers, too. It's like he just, it's unusual to see the police officers and really just have total disregard for what is happening around you. Yeah, and it is almost like deja vu again because it just c continues uh, over and over again. The same scenario where he stops a little bit, they open their doors, and yeah. he keeps going. And I don't know how long he can continue this. And you know, it's interesting because this, as police officers, we're bound by certain rules and regulations. The vehicle code, obviously, in a pursuit doesn't apply. But suspects, they're not bound by anything. Yeah. So we have to take into account a lot. Yeah, especially if this guy's a dangerous parolee and has been known to have firearms. Right. Yeah, but what you do see is you do see police cars in the area blocking certain intersections, blocking mm. streets. So that's kind of limiting where he can go. I see. So right. well, I catch you. Mm. That makes mm. sense because once they know his general vicinity where he's going to be circling, they can start to have yeah, a little more control. Yeah, and they can't box them in, really. Obviously, like you just said, Bruce, everybody has every uh, police department and law enforcement department have their own um, protocols on how to, because they go over these. They have all these training exercises on how to, you know, pursue and what have you, but they can't box them in, even though they know he kind of keeps going into this square, but they can't box them in, I guess. Yeah, we, we we did see that once in a pursuit in North Hollywood where they used a uh, metro bus and a uh, concrete hauler to kind of close the intersection so the suspect had nowhere to go. But typically, you're not that lucky. Yeah, exactly. Plus, if they're armed, you just don't know. You don't want to put an officer or anyone in in harm's way if you... If you're 100 percent correct on that. I mean, we never want to put anybody in harm's way, even, unfortunately, even the suspect, believe it or not. Right, and you see him kind of try to speed up and then realize he, nope, it's not going to work. Um, yeah. But 
those run flat tires, boy. I mean, if there's a commercial for those, this is, this is it. Where they, I mean, you've been spike stripped a few times. Your car keeps going. It's, I mean, that's a heavy. You car. still have. It's still not um, down to the rims mm -hmm. yet, which usually we start seeing them. The the tire peel off and mm -hmm. sparks and everything, but. Incredible, and you see those kids with their phones taking pictures, and hopefully that's a sign of not what you know, what not to do, you know, and mm. don't think of him as a celebrity or a hero or something because it's pretty sad to see this. These kids have to endure this in their neighborhood and in any neighborhood. Just you know, yeah, <laughs> they should just be playing and having a good time. Yeah. When you see something like this. It's, obviously, it's very exciting when you see all these mm -hmm. police cars on the helicopters overhead too. Well, see, that's the other thing, too. The helicopter brings people out of the house. What's going on? I mean, I'm curious when it flies over my house. Yeah. I'm like, why mm -hmm. is it making circles? What's going on? <laughs> exactly. And so people come out of their house and they want to videotape because this is a life event for them in their neighborhood. You're right about that. I think that is your mm -hmm. natural instinct. It's when true. You see I, go, I, go I go outside and I look out the windows. And yeah, I, mean, I go outside. <laughs> I think he's on Central Avenue right now. So he seems to be circling again, and he went on 88th um, Street. Avenue, 88th Street. I'm not sure, but it's yeah, it's 88th place. Place. Seems like I take that back. Kind of, he's mm -hmm. going through his own, his normal little grid because he keeps getting back on yep. um, South Central Avenue and um, hmm. um, just going to sit here and watch him and see. We hope that he just gives up at some point. You know, this is wasting so many officers' time and yeah, money. The time and resources, the money going to this where he's not going to get away. Well, you know, that, and that's a very good point that we, we don't talk about is look at the drain on the resources in the area. In the Firestone, Florence, Graham area right now, you've got probably maybe 12 units that have flooded the area, not, not counting maybe the sheriffs are also on the peripheral. And so these are all units that are not handling calls for service or not actively being proactive patrolling streets or neighborhoods. Yeah, it, it is a shame. Absolutely right, and you know he just about 15 miles an hour. Is that what that says? Not even, not even 15 miles an hour. What a contrast from earlier on. You know when this pursuit began, he was going at such high speeds that he, um, the officers were forced to just kind of back off and, and do a kind of a tracking mode because they were really worried about the safety of people on the streets. And and what a contrast. <laughs> Well, you know, it almost seems like it's a game now with him. He's mm -hmm. slowing down, almost stopping, speeding up a little bit. It seems like it, he, it's like a game with him. Yeah, I bet. It, it does look like that. I, I mean, at some point, I, you're going to run out of gas, even if your tires, I mean, these aren't, it's not like this is a fuel efficient vehicle. Look at all those people, people on the corner. All the people on their phones. On the corner. There's going to be plenty of video of this, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he's just toying with the officers now. And that gets a whole different mindset of the officers, too, because they're, they're obviously getting frustrated. Okay. And that's when their training kicks in. That's when the supervisor on the radio saying, guys, I know this is frustrating for you. Let's stay mm -hmm. the course. Mm. Let's, let's do what we're trained to do. Interesting. Because, yeah, if we're getting frustrated watching it, I can't imagine how those officers must feel. Yeah. Yeah. And Especially a slow speed pursuit, too, because... It's just been going on, and we're going around the same block again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Bruce, do they ever change? You know, you keep seeing we keep seeing the same you know car right behind that suspect. Do they ever change out crews like the CHP does? Um, if yeah. they have been getting being on this for too long, and they you, they probably are getting a little bit tested with this situation, do they ever just like swap them in and out? Great question. CHP is very well versed in that because they go through different areas where different. CHP uh, geographical offices are. I mean, so they do swap that out. For LAPD, uh, typically they, they have the primary unit in the pursuit, then they have a secondary unit followed by a supervisor and then an additional car uh, to help with the felony stop. But they won't really change them out. Um, what LAPD does have going for them is there's two officers in the car. So the driver and the bookman or the book or the passenger officer, they're constantly talking to each other, mm. keeping themselves calm. That's good. And we saw him just do a U-turn and uh, turn down the same street um, and seeming to want to slow down and stop again. But we've seen this a mil million times. Yeah. So it's sort of like it would it'd be interesting to hear the radio, the, the conversations between the officers in the radio mm -hmm. saying, okay, he's pulling over. Okay, no, no he's not. Okay, <laughs> exactly. keep going. Okay, everyone slow down. Right. Okay. You know, it's, it's 
Well, they cl they close this intersection. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone that. has to be irritated when you're officer? driving. To exactly. And the officer's running there. They see an officer right person? there to the right, and then one to the left, and he's pretty much boxed in here. Um, hopefully. Yeah, you know, going back to your earlier question too, the the first police vehicle is not calling the pursuit. Whereas they're focused on driving and following. The second vehicle, or maybe even the third vehicle, is calling the pursuit. And also, the mm -hmm. helicopter is very important in All this because right. they're giving the officers real time traffic conditions and directions mm -hmm. of travel and what's up ahead. So it, there, it's a great coordinated effort. And is that how they know to block certain streets off and, and ahead of time or lay a spike strip just from the helicopter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have the orbital platform, which is basically calling, may even be calling the pursuit to take mm. the stress off the officers driving and following this guy, saying, hey, he's coming up on Hooper Avenue again at 18th Street. Let's get a unit there. Let's get a spike strip there. So, And you can see they, they've just flooded the area with right. officers. I can't even count how many now because they've blocked so many streets off. And again, you know, underscoring that, that this is a waste of resources to, for this one person. That is not going to be too, The other thing, too, which they are worried about is, is this a friendly crowd that is gathering there? Yeah. You know, that's right. why you need a lot of resources mm -hmm. because they may not be all friendlies. Oh, right. Well, that's a good So that's, you do have yeah. to maintain crowd control when this thing finally ends. So many factors to consider with something like this. And again, yeah, you have as a supervisor, mm -hmm. I'm thinking plan A, B, C, and D. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. I mean, all the way, well, trying to send out a tweet for people who are in this area, of course, can't seem to and after you know, after seeing this, you know, um, Bruce, that you know, well-deserved retirement. You know, I, the stress that you officers endure, and, and um, sheriffs and LAPD, it, it's such a stressful job, and, and this is sort of highlighting that. We well, you know it's funny you bring that up, but there was actually a study. For every year we, you retire after the age of fifty-five, you add two years to your life expectancy. Oh my goodness! Wow. wow. That's crazy. So, I was I was fortunate at age fifty five and a half. I retired. Oh, good yeah. for you. Good that for makes you. Me feel happy being that my dad is a retired police officer. That's correct. Well. Yes, we me, talked about yeah, that. Makes yeah, me, makes me feel very good. He's uh, actively busy and uh, far yes. less stressed. So it's always good to see people being able to retire, especially when they have these kind of stressful jobs. Now he seems to be yeah. going a different street, uh, co uh, covered with trees. Uh, maybe he's thinking he can hide. Um, but he, he went off his little route for a little bit. Uh, yeah, because what they're also planning for is when he goes to ground or a foot bail, possibly mm -hmm. a foot bail. So that's why, that's why you see so many officers in the area, because they, they're going to set up a containment mm -hmm. very, very quickly on this guy, and he's going to get caught. Right, exactly. And if he's smart, he will just quietly surrender and sooner rather than later. <laughs> well, that'd be the smart thing to do, yeah. but... <laughs> but not necessarily as everyone we already <laughs> witnessed that he might yeah, not be the not necessarily the, the, the most smart. Yeah, I don't think he's a rocket scientist. Uh, so. Yeah, but uh, and you know, I still don't know what's in the back of that truck or what type of truck that is, um, or if it looks like a company truck or something. But um, we don't know if that's a stolen truck, or we haven't heard any information on that. Yeah, it looks like he just wanted for prior crimes, mm -hmm. the carjacking, the ADW on the police officer. Uh, whether this is his personal truck or it's stolen, uh, I haven't heard anything on that. But uh, he definitely knows the people in this area because they're coming up to him. Mm -hmm. Which we see a lot happen. So you let you know that this person probably mm -hmm. lives in this area, probably trying to find a, a friendly face that they really can maybe s figure out how to keep eluding police, which at this point it seems like it's going to be very tough. Yeah. And as people, you know, traffic picks up because kids are picked up at school, people are out. Um, it's about 2.30, 3 o'clock when kids get out, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and a lot of parents trying to get to their kids, which is just as stressful for the parents who are being mm -hmm. stuck in traffic, the kids waiting. Um, I'm know. amazed how many people are just able to stand on the street and you know, watch this guy drive by. And it picks up every time he goes around the block. Yeah, they, well, they, it's as if everybody knows the loop, mm -hmm. and um, but this, I mean, this is just going so slow, which is good because we don't really like the fast ones when everyone's lives are in danger. But this also is just 
pull over at, the, at some yeah, point. Yeah, and it looks like he might be actually stopping. Oh, oh no. Ellen, ah, she did you it again. shouldn't have said it. I jinxed it. <laughs> you did jinx it. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> But I mean, uh, really, people have to want, people have to get onto their their daily routine, and this is really mm -hmm. impacting their schedule. And I'm sure, for the schools, the, all the local schools that are in this area, they're they're either they're going to sort of keep in the kids. Those mm -hmm. teachers have to stay later, and you know, it Im impacts a lot of exactly. people. And, and that's a very good point you just brought up. You know, because if there are schools in the area, they might have gone into a lockdown mode oh, because right. of this. <clears throat> which means no one, nobody's picking up oh, their kids. Goodness. You have a lot of parents that are impacted now because you know ultimately this. if he stops by a school, they have to. You see a crossing guard there. They mm -hmm. have to lock the schools down for safety. Yeah, and it's very nerve-wracking when you, you know, he knows he's a parolee and could be armed. And that, that's a scary situation because he's obviously desperate to get away, so um, his actions you know, could be desperate. It, yeah, but wow. he's definitely in the same area. There's mm -hmm. that El Supermarket again. Now he's just going the other way. He was going, I, I think it's uh, east. Now he's going west. Um, so it looks like, you know, this this is going to come to a close very quickly. Yeah, I hope you're right. We yeah, we do. At some, It's going to have to come to a close because he is going to run out of gas. But Yeah, and the tires will deflate. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, we were talking, Bruce, about you've seen it earlier, but we saw one pursuit and go all the way down to San Diego County on rims, and it was sparking. It looked like it was at night, and it was looked like you know fireworks were going off. But it kept going. Keeps going, yeah. Yeah, depending on the vehicle and the make, uh, some of these vehicles will run on rims with sparks flying. In this case, you know, these are definitely some uh, low-profile tires, and mm. it seems like he's able to drive on them. Goodness. Yeah. And it's, it's such a cat and mouse game with the police, too, because he knows that they're he, he feels secure enough that they're not going to um, use any sort of, you know, yeah. he's really force. annoying. He's just trying to he's just like a, a ta taunting them mm -hmm. almost. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we did see a pursuit. I think it was about a year and a half ago where San Bernardino sheriffs actually fired from the helicopter platform into the vehicle. Yes. And the pursuit ended very, very quickly. Yeah. It's not something I think that has ever been done before. And they kind of set the precedent and we haven't seen it since. But uh, it was very interesting when that was done. Is that a tactic? That's eh, interesting. It's hard to say. Yeah, that's uh, not done very often, is it? This no, a deserted that is, that is maybe a deserted dirt road. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they were they were in a very isolated area to do that. But there is some new technology which they're trying that you know they can like send like a taser dart into the car to oh. short out the electronics. Wow. Uh, there's all sorts of things that they're doing. Uh, sure none of be. it's available yet. That would sure be wonderful. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Okay. And then okay, so now we're looking at him. We can because it, it does escalate the frustration of these officers to see this guy just play a game. Just re you, you, you know, know he, he, yeah. yeah. I mean, we could just keep going back and forth on uh, South Central Avenue, um, I guess at East 88th Street. Yep, he's been on the street about oh, gosh, the whole time. It feels ten like. times. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like I wonder where he's trying to go. Is there somebody on the street where you know one of the family members and they're not home? I, I you just yeah. have no idea what what's going through this mind. That the, the, is he talking to the crowds? I don't. I can't yeah, quite make that he out. He hasn't made any hand signals. Sometimes, yeah. you know, they're waving they're to people waving. and stuff, but he hasn't done that, except for that one time where he, you know, kind of high fives somebody on the street. Yeah, it also looks like he may, t may have taken off a shirt and went into, like, some sort of uh, tank top or what they call a white beater T-shirt. Because uh, it looks like he had a black shirt on now. It looks like it's a white shirt. Yeah, like sort. white tank top. Yeah, exactly. I th that's what I saw, the, the tank top. But it's probably hot, too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm sure, but maybe he is trying to conceal his identity if he were to run oh. our police on the vehicle. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we're talking generalities. Yeah, we're talking to someone who's desperate, too, and if he thinks he's going to get away by taking his shirt off. I know. You know. Yeah. But I guess at this point, he has nothing to lose. No, and he's doing the same maneuvers over and over again. So like you talked about, the frustration of the officers is, is pretty high on this. Yeah. I, because I, obviously they would, they have better things to do. They would like to get on with their job. Um, and for this to happen, it, it's frustrating. Look at wheel the right there, by no the way. No question about it. Oh, now it's, uh, so yeah, that wheel is burning Something's now. going on with that back right uh, tire. Good. Because I don't think he can get traction. You know, when you it's like when you're on snow. You can't get yeah, maybe this ice. Will, maybe this will finally... Uh, put an end to this. Um, yeah, hopefully, yes.
Well, Bruce, we certainly appreciate your input here. And here you are retired and you're having to talk about a pursuit with us, but we really appreciate it because you have the insight and the, you know, the knowledge that keeps us kind of little, makes it more interesting as well because we don't know the inner workings of how it, how a pursuit takes place. Absolutely. And you know, we're well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Oh, we Thank you. I really do. do. Thank you. And Bruce, one second. We're going to go to Scott Reif. Scott Reif is joining us as well in Air 7 HD to talk about his vantage point. Scott, have you been seeing this? This driver keeps stopping and going, stopping and going. Yeah, it seems to be a pattern. I mean, you mentioned that. I'm playing a little bit of catch-up. It's on a Central right at Manchester at the interchange right now. What we do have going on here is that LAPD is sending in a couple of armored vehicles. The SWAT team is going to send them down. At least with a pursuit like this, the individual is pretty predictable. I mean, it's not traveling through a lot of areas. They can sort of shut down a couple of streets and try and block them in. But that's going to be the moment of truth when that happens if the suspect is armed, and depending on how desperate he might be. But we are seeing the same type of activity. Now, I haven't seen much of this pursuit. We just got overhead. Have you seen the door open up like this? Has he done this uh, at other other times where it appears he's getting out? Scott, this yeah, is he's the first finally time. getting out. But well, oh, you know, or he's Ellen, not. don't okay. say it again. <laughs> I jinxed it again. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, he, he had I, opened I, I'm not door. sure if you, if you mentioned that for me, don't say it again or not, but uh, that's the first I had seen that. But it, once again, I had just actually uh, well, played a little never catch seen up here because I just got on the pursuit. We haven't seen him come open the door no. so fully, Scott, with his hands okay. up and then kind of go. We, this is the first time. So, yeah, so bizarre behavior, uh, at least not traveling at a high rate of speed. I know you've mentioned that. We looked at those tires. Now, those are big rims. The tires have got to be right about down on to just what's left of the rubber since we know they're not inflated. Those look like 24-inch rims. If he travels at a higher rate of speed, that's going to be a problem. They'll just come apart, and I won't be able to continue. But at this rate of speed, it could pr probably continue on for some time. We'll open up a little bit. We're on Manchester headed eastbound, and it looks like this round in circles. Here we go, now turning southbound. But if, if we did hear the armored vehicles are en route, two of them. And, boy, they really want to get this over with. It's impacting traffic, as you mentioned. It is turning out to take so many resources from the LAPD that could be doing other things at this point in time. Uh, and then we see so many people out on the streets just waiting for this to come by. And if the suspect is armed, you know, I mean, obviously that's the situation they have to sort of plan on. That's a possibility. And when it does come to an end and they do get him boxed in, that will be the moment of truth. And we hope from watching these things in the past that this individual just gives himself up peacefully. Because the last thing you'd want to see in a situation like this is a shootout, and that's one of the reasons you just don't see the police go in and say, hey, we're going to stop this immediately. They don't know if the suspect's armed, and, you know, look at all the people standing around that could be in harm's way. It's scary. All right, because you figure, you know, if there is some sort of shooting at any, of any kind, we've seen people on every single block just standing out there watching, so the officers have to take that into account as well. But, it, you know, he, at least he did try to stop at one time and open the door for the very first time, so maybe... He's getting closer to surrendering. Yeah, we certainly would hope so. We certainly would hope so. And um, Jay, if you can give me the streets here, you know, Jay helps me out so much on some of these locations where he's headed southbound away from Manchester at a slow rate of speed. And if he continues to do what he's done before, he's going to make a left turn, probably come back to the north or make a right turn, come back up central once again. Uh, you can see we're at 88th place headed southbound. This has all taken place east of the 110 freeway so far uh, from what I've been aware of and we had saw some behavior a moment ago where he opened the door. We just hope that that happens again and now we see him just making gestures towards the people out on the streets. Um, we haven't been able to identify exactly what's in the back of the truck. We're trying to get a little better look of that but we do believe uh, we're fairly certain there's only one person on board the vehicle. Yeah, we're pretty sure of that and he's been on 88th place about, oh, what, a dozen times at so. least. Okay. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is sort of this, 88th uh, Street, 88th Place, and uh, South Central Avenue. Those, that's sort of the loop mm -hmm. that uh, the suspect is taking. Yeah, westbound 89th, uh, 89th from Hooper now. Probably going to get back on Manchester and come back around again. And, you know, we've seen a lot of these, and it seems like at this point in time, when it, when it gets to this point, they usually end up peacefully. I know that's that's a stretch, but the ones I've seen, when the suspect is just basically in this behavior to get attention, 
that's what it seems like what it is at this point in time. Usually when it does end, they end somewhat peacefully. They don't end with a vehicle smashing into someone or someone getting hurt. Certainly that's not always the case, but that's what we've seen in the past when the individual is just really looking for attention. It usually just finally ends with them running out of gas or them finally getting tired of doing this or police block them in. Uh, in this case, we think that's probably how it's going to end because they're just using so much resources to follow this individual. And it looks like to me at this point, he's really just going around in circles to try and get attention uh, from the people on the streets. Yeah, it certainly looks like he's just hot dogging around now and it's, um, you know, talking to some perhaps people he knows, obviously. Yeah. And then, okay, so is he going to give up? Who knows? Because they, and then everyone doesn't seem very um, alarmed by his presence because they just keep standing mm -hmm. out there. The skateboarder just keeps cruising right next to him. Will he stop? Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be standing around there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Ellen and Colleen, you know, you look at this situation. You, we know that already the suspect... Uh, had driven the vehicle towards officers, so an assault on a police officer. There's a door going open. Let's hope he gets out at this point, obeys their commands, and gets down on the ground. This comes to an end, and the neighborhood can get back to Ooh. normal. It looks like he's out of the vehicle, oh, so there's some progress. Uh, this is scary, though, because right now, if he does not obey the officers, we'll try and get around to the other side. He's probably going to pick up his shirt to make sure he doesn't have a weapon in his waistband. More than likely, they're going to get him face down onto the ground, maybe throw his keys out so he can't hop back in. Right now, he can still get back in. But what's so scary is that with the officers behind their doors and their guns drawn, look at the line of fire if this individual would grab for a gun. Right. I mean, it's just frightening but the threat to the neighborhood right now. And let's just hope this ends right now peacefully. That would be wonderful news. He seems to keep putting his hands down. Maybe, maybe the officer's instructions are not super clear. Well, no, this isn't the behavior. That, trust me, their, their commands to him right now are very clear. Uh, they are telling him in one unified voice what to do, and he is not doing it. And he's been uh, taunting. His hands would be up. Yeah. Excuse, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, he's been taunting them all day, so it's, it's not surprising that he's still doing that. There we go. Now, this is the behavior you would expect if he was obeying their commands. They want him in a position where it's going to be extremely difficult for him to get to a weapon or to do anything to harm the officers as they approach. They're always going to be concerned about the vehicle. If there's another suspect in the vehicle or a person, not necessarily a suspect, they'll be concerned about that, but they probably have a good idea that there was only that suspect, that driver on board the car. They want him down like this, more than likely with his arms spread open so that he can't get to something quickly. They'll want to clear the vehicle. Then they'll want to come around and take the suspect into custody. They don't want him rolling up like that. They want him face down. When he's rolling up, he can see the officers, and he can actually make an aggressive move. Mm. This is great news, though. They are approaching him. It doesn't look like he's making an aggressive move, and it looks like this will all be over in just a moment without anyone being injured. And, boy, that's what we always hope when we see these things, especially when they go on for so long and affect so many people. It looks like it's over at this point and uh, also looks like uh, no one got hurt. And, uh, boy, that's fantastic. Thank yeah. goodness. And the officers are trying to keep those keep kids away, away from uh, yeah, wow. from getting close there as well. We just heard um, from Bruce Thomas also talking about, you know, okay, so you take the suspect into custody, but you want to make sure that the crowd is also uh, calm and not threatening right. or um, active. So they have a lot We're of stress going on. in the vehicle right away because they don't want him out there. They don't want any interaction between that suspect and somebody that you know is yelling back and forth. They're going to want to get him cleared and in the vehicle immediately just so this crowd doesn't get unruly. Come out of the shop a shot a little bit, Tracy, and let's get an idea of what is going on. But you can see all the people coming up. They want to get a shot with their phones. It could be a family member. You just never know. It could be a friend. Uh, it could be someone who has a gun. I mean, it's just a very dynamic mm -hmm. situation that's scary. And they certainly don't want him out for long. They want to get him in that vehicle in custody. And then now they want to dissolve this uh, this situation right now where they have people coming to the scene to see what's going on. They want to sort of take away the curiosity, get him in the vehicle, and then sort of uh, get everything back to normal here. Oh, certainly looks like they're doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It looks like they are doing it. And boy, you know, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, a lot of people have been um, disrupted mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. But push in, is he in the vehicle? Once they get him in the vehicle, I think they're probably trying to drive away. They're talking about crowd control right now. Uh, but once they get that vehicle out of here, there won't be anything else for the people to really to come see. And 